Welcome to The Dimensional Shift, where starseeds, quantum spiritualists, and alien enthusiasts gather to shift time, space, and dimensions. I'm Revy, your guide, and this is the universe according to me. This week I wanted to shift gears just a little bit and talk about frequency and vibration in a way that will hopefully help you make sense of your own frequency and vibrations. A lot of times in the meta community, we are fed this idea of love and light and think positive, and sometimes it can diminish our experiences and invalidate the way that we experience life here. If we're going through a really tough time, or maybe we just don't even feel like a love and light kind of person, it can really be frustrating to have people push that at you and say, this is how you need to be. And guess what? That's not how you actually need to be necessarily. While we should all strive to express ourselves in the most positive, kind, compassionate, empathetic kind of way, that doesn't mean we need to push down parts of ourself or ignore parts of ourself or act in a way that's inauthentic to ourselves. And doing so actually enhances and creates the shadow, which if you're not familiar is a term from Jungian psychology. I highly recommend learning about the shadow because it is probably the most powerful way you can heal yourself and help others heal themselves. So we're going to be talking about the natural frequency of your soul today. And what I mean by that is everybody's soul has its own frequency, its own vibration, and some of it is higher and some of it is lower, and there's neither wrong nor right in either of them. Some people, just as we are as humans, are very grounded people. Some people are light and bubbly and airy. They love to laugh. Neither is a better human than the other. It's just the way they are. It's part of their characteristic. So the first thing I want to talk about is how vibrations react with other vibrations. And what I mean by that is this. If you take a tuning fork and put it up next to another tuning fork that's the same hertz, and you strike one of the tuning forks, the second tuning fork will actually start to vibrate. This is demonstrated in different science videos on the internet. If you're curious about it, check it out. There's a really good one on Tumblr. So what I'm saying is when you come up against the things that you love and that light you up and that you're meant to be expressing with, for example, if your thing is honesty and you are an honest person in life, you get to express that rather than feeling like you should keep your mouth shut or feeling like you should keep yourself small, you will raise your vibration. You will get to vibrate at your natural frequency. And that's going to create a lot of good things in your life. It's going to start making things come together in the way that they were meant to be. On the opposite end, a tuning fork that's vibrating at 440 hertz and you strike a tuning fork with a dissonant hertz, it's going to actually shut down the 440 hertz tuning fork. And so Just like in life, if you start doing things that are inauthentic, if you start having people around you who are vibrating at a contradictory rate than you or they're bringing you down, that's essentially what it's doing. It's shutting down your frequency and lowering your vibration. I don't get caught up in the whole new meta idea of raising your vibration in a way that feels like it's something you have to strive for. I don't think that you need to go vegan. I don't think you have to you know, move to a commune. I don't think that any of that is necessary unless that's what truly lights you up. I think raising your vibration is all about doing the things that feel authentic to you and that make you go, oh my gosh, so this is what living is supposed to be. And it makes those things in your life that have felt difficult become easy because everything's going to start matching your frequency because eventually you will become the tuning fork that's putting out the frequency, that's going to get all the right things around you vibrating to you. So when you're raising your own frequency, we turn to things like crystals, we turn to the moon phase, we turn to incense and herbs, things like that. Also music, I love listening to the binaural beats on YouTube, things like that. Those things can really work to raise your frequency if you're in the right frequency to accept them. This goes back to is it dissonant or is it matching? So if it's dissonant, it can actually lower your vibration. So for example, I love this amethyst pendant that I have. I absolutely love it. It's beautiful. I love to wear it. But if I wear it on the full moon, I have nightmares. 
I have too many ghosty visitors. I can't keep up with the psychic input. And so during the full moon, I have to take it off and I have to wear something else or wear nothing at all. It also depends on the moon phase, and we'll talk about that in just a second. I've also found that one binaural meditation music works for, you know, a week, sometimes a day, sometimes an hour, and then the next time I go to listen to it, it feels off, it feels awful, it doesn't jibe, I don't want to listen to it, and so I have to find something else. So going back to the moon phases, this one is one of the trickier ones, especially if you have become more attuned to the natural cycles of the moon and the astrology signs, I found that it's really helpful to keep track of the new and the full moon and what signs they're in and how I'm doing in life. And this is because I found that during fire full moons, I get so much done. And during water full moons, I go through this intense depressive state the vibrations that come from the moon can really, really affect us. And the more attuned you get to the psychic plane, the more they're going to affect you. So I really recommend keeping some kind of moon journal, whatever you want to call it, to help you keep track of what frequencies that come from the moon and what frequencies come from the astrology signs and how they affect you in your daily life. And you can even just keep track of between the full and the new moon if you want to start there because those are really great places to start too. So not all souls vibrate at love and light and not all souls should vibrate at love and light. There are very high frequency beings that absolutely need to be here to bring in those elements of pure love, pure light, pure giving, loving essence. But not all of us need to be that way. And I think that this is a big idea in the meta community that's kind of doing us a disservice. Not everybody's going to fit into that love and light and there's nothing wrong with that. It's also going to vary by your galactic collective. It's going to affect what frequency you're putting into the world. For example, if you are, and I'll just use some of the more well-known collectives, but let's say you're Andromedan. So actually, Andromedans are not really here for love and light. Andromedans are here for authenticity, expression, freedom, things like that. And so when they're told they need to be vibrating at love and light, and that's a higher frequency than maybe they can hold for a long period of time, they're going to burn out and they're going to feel like there's something wrong with them and they're going to get frustrated and it's going to be a mess and they're going to go into a depressive state or possibly even another existential crisis. Instead, if we nurture the starseed as they are, as the Andromedan, we can say, okay, your job here is to vibrate at authenticity, expression, freedom, things like that. Then they can start to express themselves in a way that feels natural to them, and that's going to light them up even more expanding their own frequency and allowing them to bump up against other Andromedans and other collectives here that vibrate at authenticity and freedom. It's going to help everyone expand in a much greater way. And in that way, they will be adding to their mission here, their purpose here, which is in part just to be ourselves, right? There are darker aspects that must be represented throughout the universe as well as here. This is something people don't like to look at. I'm not talking about evil, I'm not talking about malice, nothing like that, but just the more grounded aspects. You can think of things like leadership or honesty or bravery, things that stem from a common sense, practical, grounded place, and that they are a lower frequency than love and light, but that doesn't make them worse, it doesn't make them less, it doesn't make them in any way not as important as love and light. And I think that's an important distinction because there are so many people here who are here to hold that frequency. And when we focus only on love and light, we're not only invalidating those star seeds, we're losing out on a big part of the way the world is supposed to come together. And in the same way, if you consider yourself a healer or want to be a healer, you don't have to have only love and light. There are great healers who are very practical and will be honest with you and they will say, no, I don't think that's quite right. I think you're lying to yourself. Or they will say, you need to focus on what lights you up. 
brings you a sense of peace and joy rather than doing what everybody tells you to do, things like that. There's very grounded healers, and those healers need to be here too to help us get rid of all of those other darker aspects that I was mentioning that we don't want because the shadow includes those darker aspects, and when we ignore them, that's when they start to bubble out of us and come out into the world as hate and evil and anger and all of that. And so we need those grounded healers to be able to help us through those unwanted emotions or socially unacceptable emotions that we still have to heal. So if you found yourself unfulfilled by this idea in modern meta that you have to vibrate at love and light and you need to be positive and just think of the good things and all of that, then you probably need to explore these ideas of grounded frequencies that may help you find yourself a little bit better and find how you should be expressing yourself. So a few really good questions you can ask yourself are, who do you admire and why? If you could be anyone or represent yourself in any way, how would you do it? What values do you refuse to compromise? What aspects do you aspire to develop to improve in yourself? What do you value in others the most? And lastly, here's a few ideas for different kinds of frequencies that are not love and light. There's one that I have on here and it's joy that is also a very high frequency. But some other really good ones that you may want to look into are things like loyalty, leadership, bravery, freedom, authenticity, selflessness, ambition, and honesty. I know for me when I discovered that my frequency was authenticity and freedom and sovereignty. It was really enlightening and I really felt like I started to become who I am rather than trying to become a person that I would never be and that I struggled to be just for other people. And I really started to find my place in the meta community because I have a very grounded frequency and so trying to vibrate at love and light was very, very difficult. It was unsustainable. It was kind of miserable, to be honest, and I always felt fake. Just let it go and try something else. This is a build your own adventure book. It's your book of life. You can write it how you want. Try things on, experiment. Everything is meant to just be a big experiment. So just try things. If something's not working, throw it out. Try something new. Don't hang on to something because if you're hanging on to something that's not at the right vibration, it's just going to keep bouncing up against your field and diminishing your vibration. Coming full circle here, I just want to say thank you so much for listening. I hope that you look forward to another Dimensional Shift episode coming soon. If you want to check out more of my stuff, I have a website, dimensionalshifter.com. It has a lot of the transmissions and the universal data that I'm downloading that is really helpful for putting things in this life in perspective. This is Revy signing off.